In this module, we're looking at automation and how students can develop solutions to problems that involve the automation of processes. To first understand automation, though, students need to have an understanding of digital systems. Now, there are a wide range of digital systems that we encounter every day, from specific ones such as a mobile phone, which is its own little digital system, through to systems that encompass the entire globe, such as the mobile phone network of towers and satellites and so forth. Um, we have computer systems in our homes where we have a link to the internet. Um, sometimes we link up between computers in an office environment. A computer itself represents a whole complex system where we have a central processing unit that does all the processing. We have a hard drive. We may have um, USB sticks and other external storage media that we can attach to it and remove. We have mice and keyboards that allow us to input information into our computers. And we have ways of retrieving information from our computers, such as our screens or printers or internet connections and so forth. So students will, over time, learn about the complexities of digital systems. Um, and it helps around their systems thinking, which encompasses digital systems in itself. So you'll introduce students to the idea of the various digital devices they have access to in the classroom or at home, their various toys that may combine to form digital systems, and increasingly looking at how these systems work individually, such as how a digital camera might work, through to how they may work as a complex system whereby we may, um, say, be running a school magazine where we take photos and someone else writes information into a word processor. Someone else puts it together into a format using some sort of software. And then they're printed out on a, on a printer to produce some paper-based uh, magazines. So that in itself is a system for producing the magazines. OK, so there are various complexities that you do need to be able to understand yourself in order to be able to teach about digital systems. One is the idea of digital, which involves binary, zeros and ones. So it's a different way of communicating information. And we communicate using zeros and ones, which is similar to other forms of communication, such as Braille, or Morse code, or semaphore flags. These are other ways of communicating information. Binary, though, is probably the simplest way, where we have things that are either turned on or off, zeros or ones. And that's how computers work. Of course, computers can process information very, very quickly. So the simpler the information is, the more efficient it is for the computer to process. But of course, zeros and ones aren't particularly useful for us. So we have various ways of translating those zeros and ones into letters and numbers and words and other symbols and so forth. But at its foundation, everything digital is made up of zeros and ones. Things that aren't made up of zeros and ones, what we call analog, have a variable nature. Um, so analog music is recorded and it can have distortions. Of course, it's not exactly um, defined, whereas digital music doesn't have any distortion. It's either correct or it's incorrect. Um, but you'll need to learn about what it means to be digital, uh, how to present that information to your students, and for your students to understand how computers process that digital information, how a computer is made up of a central processing unit and a logical processing unit, and how it converts zeros and ones into images, into sounds, into text, into numbers, and that we can then work on those um, in various ways. But don't be too concerned, though, that you don't have a full understanding of everything to do with computers at the start. You will need to gain that over time, but there are lots of resources available for teaching your students about digital systems, and you'll be able to utilize those and learn yourself as you teach your students. But the more you can understand that, 
the more that you can help your students solve problems with digital systems. Of course, remember, that is the focus of digital technologies, solving problems. So how could they put together a system, maybe for playing a computer game with their friends? So connecting two computers up or connecting a number of computers up to a, a Minecraft server so they could all play in the same Minecraft world. These are problems that the students can explore and work out how to solve. Or it may be a simpler problem as how to use a new digital camera or how to set up a virtual reality headset so that it works. These are parts of understanding digital systems. So have a look at the various um, activities and resources and video clips and I've given you an example of a student response to an assessment task. Year five and six student responding to an assessment task where they've been asked to demonstrate their understanding of their school's digital system. Now this is a C level response, so it's an average response of how a student should be able to explain their understanding of the digital system that exists in their school. Now, a higher performing student would be expected to be able to explain in more detail around various aspects. A lower performing student, lesser detail, but it gives you some idea of the expectations of knowledge that you should expect to be um, developing for your students. So have a look at that and think about how you would actually teach that so that your students could explore digital systems in a more engaging and exciting way. Um, so put your mind to coming up with a fun, engaging activity for students to explore digital systems and submit that as one of your log of learning responses.